Um, so first of all, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm so excited to be in Amsterdam. So as he said, my name is Claudia, and I'm, I am a front-end developer in this company called OutZero. So one of the main things that you're probably thinking right now is that what's the deal with the title of this, of this talk? Like, it's so weird, right? Sorting your socks with JavaScript, what's going on? So just to give you a little bit of context of why this talk is called this way, um, this was the original title, which is Intro to Computational Complexity, the Sorting Problem. And after thinking about this title, I was, uh, I was like, this is so boring. People are going to get s sleepy during my talk, so I should make it more fun. And um, I want to make a question. How many of you come from a computer science background? How many of you had algorithms courses, data structure? All right, so it's like kind of half of the audience. And how many of you are self-talk developers or coming from design or from something else? All right, so I think it's more or less half and half. So the purpose of this talk is to try to show a little bit of computer science terms and show you how can they actually be applied in JavaScript and your daily day applications. So yeah, why did I uh, call my talk this way? So I saw this article in the BBC, and it said, like, science can help you sort your socks uh, with algorithms. So I thought, like, that is a fun title. So we'll see if it's the case. So this is a really tricky talk, because it can get boring. And guys, I was really, really, really scared that you were going to be uh, sleepy during the talk. So I came up with this tricky question. So at, by the end of the talk, I hope you're paying attention and you're going to be able to answer it. So what does a pile of dirty socks, Napoleon Strategy, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte, the French, uh, the French guy, and uh, Romanian folk dance have in common? And if you want to know the answer, just keep paying attention. So first of all, computational complexity, what is that? So computational complexity is just the study of all the possible algorithms that can solve a problem. So far, so good. But this is a sorting talk. So what is a sorting algorithm? A sorting algorithm is just as an algorithm that sorts elements in a certain way, in a certain order. So which are the most commonly used orders? Numerical and lexicographical. So pay attention to these two kind of orders. But um, then again, we are in a JavaScript conference. So of course, let's talk about the JavaScript native sort function. So this is a really simple example for everyone. So we have an array of numbers. We have a 33, a 2, a 98, a 25, and 4. We call the sort function from JavaScript, and then JavaScript brings this amazing answer. We have 2, 25, 33, 4, 98. It's like, I don't know about you, but normally I thought like 25 and 33 were greater than 4 and not smaller. But you know, JavaScript is always making crazy things. Um, so what is actually happening here? Why is JavaScript giving us this answer? So what we're forgetting is that JavaScript is doing lexicographical sorting. So if we don't provide a compare function to the native sort function, uh, basically what JavaScript is going to do is it's going to convert every single element in that array into strings. And then it's going to compare every single string according to their unical code point value. So let's explain this in an easier way. So let's say we have a colors array, and you have a color red, and you have the color blue. You call the sort function, and JavaScript is going to sort it according to their Unicode code point value. And then um, blue is going to come before red, because B comes before R. Let's say it's just sorting it alphabetically. But in the second example, we have a numbers array. We have 80, and we have 9. And as you're noticing, 80 has a 56, 8 has a 56 a unicode uh, code point value, and 9 is 57. So in a more simple way, we can say that um, 9 is just lexicographically greater than 80, and that's why. So basically, for JavaScript, uh, this numbers array will be the exact same thing as if we call that array as those numbers as strings. So going back to our previous example, now we can realize why this makes sense to JavaScript. Since it's, uh, JavaScript is just converting everything to strings, then let's say that 2, 25, and 33 are lexicographically smaller than 4. So it does make sense. JavaScript isn't as crazy as we think, right? So following this approach, you can also try to sort emojis, because emojis also have unicode code point values. So in, in the second example, you can also try just sorting everything. You can sort numbers, emojis, strings, because at the end of the day, JavaScript is just converting everything back to strings and trying to make some sort out of it. 
But what if we actually want to sort numbers like we usually want to, no? like we want to sort numbers numerically speaking and increasingly or decreasingly? So I bet most of you have uh, encountered this, uh, this before in your work. You just provide a compare function, right? You, uh, you, you have uh, A minus B, and you finally have this array sorted numerically. But um, here's the question. This is a $1 million question for me. Have you ever wondered which is the algorithm used use behind the native sort function? Am I the only one who asks myself these kind of questions? Like, you guys don't think about it? Like, I feel, sometimes I feel I need more friends, you know? I need less free time. Um, and the answer to this question is that actually the ECMAScript standard doesn't impose a certain algorithm to be used. So basically, this means that all of the JavaScript engines, all of the browsers can implement their own version of, uh, of the native source function and use whatever algorithm they feel like using. And the good news is that most of these JavaScript engines are open source. And basically, what I did, I just uh, went through every single engine and tried looking at their implementation of the source function. So this is what I discovered. This is a spider monkey from Firefox. And as you can see, spider monkey is using an implementation of merge sort. And what I really like about reading source code is uh, reading comments, because you can actually learn a lot of them, a lot of, out of them. So this is the first comment. And it says, merge sort is stable. This sort is a stable. Sequence of equal elements is preserved. So the concept of stability is something that I'm going to be explaining a little bit later. But just keep in mind, merge sort is a stable algorithm. Cool. So the second comment is, apply insertion sort to small chunks to reduce the number of merge passes needed. Basically, what this is saying is that spider monkey is using the algorithm insertion sort for smaller arrays to keep performance. And for bigger, it's, uh, it's using merge sort. So what about V8? V8 is using quick sort. Now, similar to spider monkey, uh, the V8 engine is also using insertion sort for smaller arrays to keep performance. And um, Nitro from Safari, it's using also an implementation of merge sort. And Chakra is using an implementation of quick sort. Now, just to sum up what I just told you and what I just showed you, basically, the most of the popular JavaScript engines are using a combination of these three algorithms, insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. Now, this is the hardcore part of the talk, and I hope you don't get sleepy. Just bear with me for a moment, right? So stability, I, sh I told you I was, I was going to explain the concept of stability. So what's that? So basically, stability is means uh, a stable sort is one in which equivalent elements retain the relative positions after sorting. That doesn't make much sense, but it's easier to explain with the picture here. So let's say we have uh, a seven of spades, a five of hearts, two of hearts, and a five of, uh, of spades, and you want to order it, or order them uh, increasingly. Um, five in, the five is of, of hearts and the five of spades have the same value. So in a, sta in a, in a stable algorithm, like the in like the example above, you will notice that the five of hearts is ordered before the five of spades, and, and therefore it's uh, maintaining its original position, which was before the five of spades. And in the second example, in the example below, uh, the algorithm just doesn't care the original order of the, of the elements. So basically, it's going to order it increasingly, but the five of hearts and the five of spades just switch uh, places. Why is this important? I'm going to show you an example. Uh, later on. So I told you, these are the three main important algorithms for the JavaScript engine implementation. So I'm going to be explaining a little bit how they work. So the first one, I told you, it's good for small, uh, for small arrays. And the way it works is um, this array is going to search sequentially all of the elements and then compare uh, all of the elements against each other. So if this doesn't make much sense, I think a video will help a little bit more with that. So let's say uh, insertion sort will start in the beginning of the algorithm, and it's going to start comparing each element against each other, right? And then it's just going to continue swapping them to the beginning and try to make some sort of uh, sorted sublist. And then the array is just sequentially continuing uh, sorting, sorting the array, right? This is, uh, this is really difficult to explain in, like, 10 seconds without making people sleepy. This is something that you can check in books, whatever. But I just want to give you an overview of how, of how they work. 
So basically, implementing this uh, algorithm in JavaScript is really easy. This is a JavaScript implementation of insertion sort. So if you look at the code, you don't have to grasp it right away, but you will notice that there is nothing weird going on. It's just a really simple for loop. Actually, there are two for loops, and that's it. The first for loop is just basically doing the iterating over all of the array, and the second for loop is just uh, swapping the elements, right? So then again, what I want to show you and what I, and what I, re what I really want you to, to understand is that this algorithm is really easy to implement in JavaScript. There is nothing we're going on. So if I remove all of the comments and all of the new lines in this implementation, basically implemented insertion sort in JavaScript takes only 10 lines of code. Now, how many of you know the concept of divide and conquer? All right, yeah, like half of the audience. So divide and conquer comes, I don't know if it's true or not, but they say that they come from Napoleon, in which uh, they say that he was a military genius, and the way that he would uh, win wars would be by um, dividing its enemy by two and then attacking each side of its enemy alone. So all of its resources and all of its uh, soldiers would go and, and try attacking one side of the enemy at the time. So the way this is translated to computer science is in this way. So the second algorithm that I show you is the merge sort algorithm. So the way it works is, given an array, you will divide that array into two, and then individually you will continue dividing those arrays into two, into two recursively, until at the end of the day you have only one, uh, one element array. And if you think about it, an, an, ele an array that, is, that only has one element, it's already trivially sorted, right? Because you only have one element, it's already sorted. So basically, at the end of the day, you will end up with a lot of uh, different uh, sub already sorted subarrays. And then the merge part of the algorithm will come by. So you have a lot of subarrays that are sorted, and you will combine them back into a big uh, array that is already sorted. Then again, this is like so weird to explain in words, so let me show you a video. And this is why it's divide and conquer. Basically, you are dividing the array, and you are conquering every subarray or solving it to make everything easier. So this is the video for Mer Sword. You have your array, you divide it in two, you keep dividing those subarrays in two, in two, and then you end up with eight subarrays that are already sorted. Then the merge function will take those, sub, those two subarrays and then combine them in order. And then it will just continue, continue, continue until both of them and all of the arrays are um, sorted. So this is how merge sort functions. How, do, how does this look in JavaScript? So in this case, instead of having just one function like insertion sort, it's a um, little more complicated algorithm. So we will have a merge sort function and a merge function. So the merge sort is really easy. Um, you only have, you can notice that there is a variable called middle, and what this variable will do is just divide the, the array into two. And then you have, we will use the slice function from JavaScript to have a left array and a right subarray. So basically, at the end of the day, um, we will recursively call the merge sort on these subarrays, and then we will use the merge function to merge all of these arrays back into a sorted one. You can see this later. You can like process it and try to understand how it works later. But then again, what I want to show you is that there is nothing out of uh, out of the world here. It's just um, some a little bit of recursion, uh, use a little bit of um, a condition over there. There is nothing weird going on, right? This is the merge uh, function. So basically, it's receiving both. It's receiving both arrays. Uh, then there is a result array in which you will add all of the assorted elements. And then there is a while that will just put uh, a pointer in the first element of, of the first array and the first uh, element of the second array. And then it's just comparing, like, which one is smaller than the other. And the smaller one will go to the results array. So at the end of the day, you will just return back a result array with all of these uh, elements. Then again, this is just a function with a while loop. Um, it's just making swap, it's just comparing, nothing out of this world. If you remove all the co comments, new lines, and everything, this is just a 23-line 20 tr of code uh, implementation. It's really easy, it doesn't take that much space, really easy to implement. 
And the last one, if you're still with me, uh, it's the quicksort algorithm. And the way it works is similar to this divide and conquer um, idea. And the, base, the, the way it will work is you will find a, a pivot element or pivot. And basically, most of the times, you, you will try to make it the middle element of the array. And then the algorithm will just switch all of the elements that are smaller than this pivot one to the left, and all of the elements that are greater than this pivot to the right. If it doesn't make, what I'm, if, if it doesn't make sense what I'm saying, let me show you a video. <laughs> so in this example, um, we have three as the pivot element. And the algorithm is just checking every element in that array and sweeping them, um, swapping them, depending if they are uh, greater or if they are uh, smaller. So in this sense, um, the, array is gonna con the, algorithm, the algorithm is going to continue checking. Eight is smaller than eight, than three. One is smaller than three, sorry, and five is greater than three, and it's going to swap it. And then we have two subarrays. We have a two and one subarray and a five, eight, seven, six, four subarray. And the, and the algorithm is going to continue uh, sorting uh, recursively. How does this look in code? So the, here, here again, we can notice that there is recursion going on. Uh, we're calling the quicksort uh, function inside the quicksort function. Um, there is a partition function that is uh, in charge of just uh, looking for the pivot and swapping elements to one side or the other. So then again, nothing weird, just uh, a little bit of recursion. And the partition uh, function is just doing whiles, while loops. So it's pu putting a pointer to the beginning of a, an array, a pointer to the end of the array, and then it's just comparing those elements and checking if they should be to one side or the other. I think this is the more complex uh, implementation of the tree algorithms that I show you. But then again, it's only 31 lines of code. So basically, you can just uh, extend the array prototype and add your own self-implemented JavaScript sorting functions. And you can use them as if they were almost native. You can have my array dot insert, insert sort, merge sort, quick sort, whatever. You can use them in your applications as if they were almost native. And at this point, you're probably thinking, like, why on earth will I ever implement my own JavaScript functions if there is already a shiny, cool, uh, native one made by really intelligent people and, I don't know, like, implemented in C++? Why would you ever care about doing one yourself? And I have several reasons. But the first one is because of design strategies. All of the concepts that, concepts that I've been talking about during the past few minutes, uh, divide and conquer, recursion, uh, these things makes you better developer, just knowing the concept. And I want to ask you a question. How many of you have debugged your, uh, your code base by commenting chunks of your code? Like you will comment, comment, comment until you finally find it somewhere. Nobody? Ah. That's divide and conquer, guys. Like maybe unconsciously you didn't know it, but it, that's divide and conquer, just dividing half and half until you finally find it. Um, this is a tweet from Dan Abramov, which says, uh, most valuable debugging technique, divide and conquer. And basically what he's explaining in this, in this tweet is that he will debug his CSS code by just dividing or commenting half of it, half of it, half of it, until he will find where uh, in his CSS code he had a, some sort of bug. This is the same concept behind git bisect. So maybe you didn't know about it, but this is the divide and conquer uh, concept that it's in computer science. The second, the second reason uh, is because of stability. I hope you remember what it meant. But um, let's say that this is the MDN docs. And it says that our, the, array, the sort function from, the ar from array is not necessarily stable. What does this mean? This means that depending on the on the place that you uh, use your sort function, the results are going to be different. So the thing is that if you want to have persistent data among all of your applications, uh, this might not be the best idea. So what does this actually mean? Let's say that we have this um, array of all of the speakers uh, from this conference. And uh, if you're noticing, they're already sorted uh, by last name. So in the very beginning, we have Faith Asset, we have Armagan. I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing the, the names incorrectly, but just bear with me. Um, so we have in the second place Armagan Amkalar, Japrak Ayasoglu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have some, uh, we have them by age. So let's say the organizers of uh, Amsterdam JS, they want to sort this list again by, by age. So normally, we will do something like this, right? Nothing weird going on. 
The thing is that the answer and the result would change depending on where you uh, do it. So for V8, V8 is using quicksort. Quicksort is not a stable algorithm. What does this look like? So the result for the previous uh, function, as you, can, as you might notice, it's correctly sorted by age. But the thing is that for people that have the same age, in this case 26, of course this is uh, unreal ages. I, I, I don't know the ages of the speakers. Um, but you notice that, for example, Japrak Ayasoglu, who was in the very top, he is not in the top anymore. And then Imad El Jafi is on the top. And basically, the, or the previous alphabetical order that we had is completely lost. What if we do that exact same function in Nitro? Nitro has MERSORT. MERSORT is a stable algorithm. So the algorithm will uh, preserve the preview sorting. And basically, you have your speakers uh, sorted by age, but also alphabetically as you had it before. So if you care about having persistent data, maybe you will care about creating your own sorting functions. And the third may, um, and most important um, reason that you will care about implementing your own sorting functions is because of performance. And here's the thing. Believe it or not, uh, implementing your own JavaScript function can actually be, your function can actually be faster than the native sort function. So how come you can create a, a function that is faster than the native one? So if you were really, really paying attention to all of my, to all of my, to the talk, uh, perhaps you noticed that when I was showing the source code for V8 and for Nitro, uh, the source code was actually written in JavaScript. What didn't wasn't wasn't the JavaScript engines written in C++ or some other language? How come the JavaScript engine is written in JavaScript itself? Is this some sort of JavaScript inception? Kinda, kinda. But actually, in computer science, this is called self-hosting, which is just implementing parts of a language in that very language itself. But isn't, isn't that slow? Like, isn't implementing something in JavaScript slower than just doing it in shiny C++ and, and stuff? So here's the thing. Um, let's say that JavaScript has uh, methods in, in their array, uh, like for each, map, reduce, and sort. And basically what we do is that for every single element in the array, we will take uh, a callback. And we will uh, have a, a callback for every element. So basically what we're doing every time we're iterating over the array and calling this callback is that we're switching context. We're switching context between C, between compile C++ and interpreter JavaScript. And this context switch is expensive. It's making your arrays less performant. And if you don't believe me, try comparing a for each with a for loop. And you will tell me. So basically, this is also to sum up. Uh, Spider B8 and Nitro are self-hosted, and Spider Monkey and Chakra are not. And uh, if you really don't believe me, and it's like if it's too hard to believe that perhaps your self-implemented uh, functions are could be faster than the native one, let's do some benchmarking. So first of all, uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer: these experiments were made in my Mac computer in a Chrome browser. Um, so let's say I made a comparison between the JavaScript native sort function, between the implementations that I just show, show you of insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. So this is the first case. We have a 10-element array, and the elements inside that array are just randomly created numbers, right? So as you might notice, insertion sort is the fastest algorithm. It's even faster than the native one. And then merge sort is the slowest. For 100 elements, insertion sort is still the fastest algorithm. As I told you before, insertion sort is really good for small, uh, for small arrays. For uh, 1,000 elements, insertion sort is still faster than the native one. Uh, for 1,000 elements, 100,000 elements, uh, we notice that insertion sort is no longer the fastest one, because as I told you, this is good only for small arrays. But then again, Quicksort is taking the lead, and Quicksort becomes the fastest algorithm between the four of them, even faster than the native function. What happens with a million elements? So with a million elements, my computer crashed. So yeah, don't do that. And uh, for the following examples, I took away insertion sort because insertion sort was being really, really crappy about it. 
So with a million elements, uh, quick sort is still faster than the native. I mean, you're getting the idea of what I'm trying to say, right? And last but not least, uh, with 10 million elements, quick sort is still faster. So the takeaway of this talk is like, I don't, I don't want. I don't want you to tell you guys that you should just start implementing everything by yourself. So, but you have to be really critical about which is the ideal scenario and which would be the best way to, to spend your time. Like, if, it's, uh, if you need performance, if you need uh, consistent data, perhaps implementing these functions could be a good idea, either on the back end for, with Node or in the front end. Um, keeping persistent data is important. But then again, you have to choose your battles. Maybe this, the native sort of function works just fine. But it's important that you know that these things can, can happen. So <laughs> this is a certificate of excellence, because this was a computer science talk. And if you were not sleeping during it, I'm so proud of you. And uh, now you are all experts in sorting algorithms in JavaScript. And this is a dirty pile of socks. I hope you uh, sort your socks using these implementations of these algorithms. And if you want to know more deeply, because I know I just try to explain these really complex algorithms in like five seconds, um, there is a lot of really, really interesting books. There is the Algorithm Design Manual that is really good for interviews, and the Foundations of Algorithms. And last but not least, if you actually remember my very first question in the beginning of the talk, I asked you what's uh, what do a dirty pile of socks and uh, Napoleon and the Romanian fold dance have in common? Um, if you are more into visuals and you like videos and you like, for some reason, Romanian folk dance, uh, there are a lot of videos in YouTube that explains the sorting algorithms using these people that are dancing. So if you are into that, you can also check it out. Um, if you are more into reading, I also wrote an article about all of the things that I just explained in a list of parts. A list of parts. So I, I'm going to post the, the slides later if you are interested. And that's all for me. I hope you learned something today. And thank you. Give it up for Claudia. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you.